I love when I see a lesbian with their boyfriend. It's like, ah, you hate that man. Hey, that was me. I was not lesbian. So sorry, boys. Um, won't happen again. This whole idea of like celebrities coming out casually, like we have Ellen, it's like a whole fucking to do. And now it's like bitches just tweet, make a TikTok, and it's like revolutionary still, and people get hyped, yeah. but it's a lot more casual. What's up, bitches? Welcome back to another episode of So Wet, So Dry. I am one of your hosts, Autumn. Like this season, there's a new Sims pack about polyamory that just came out, and I'm about to make it my whole personality. Mm -hmm. And I work in entertainment. And I'm your other host, Fiji, like the island, like the water. I think I'm getting my period in a week, and I really fucking feel that shit, and I work in social media and marketing. If you guys are new here, what we do on So Wet, So Dry is we explore duality through deep diving topics about sex, relationships, personal identity, all where internet trends and reality collide. We do post polls on our Instagram story for every single episode that we do. So make sure you're following us on Instagram at so wet, so dry. The O's are zeros to be a part of that. And wherever you're listening, you can also go to Spotify to support us if you feel so inclined. Um, our listener support is linked. It's 99 cents a month, $4.99 or $9.99. Help your girls out. Yes, and today we are talking about the hot queer girls. We're talking about all the ladies coming out, the seeming boom in lesbian and queer <laughs> representation. Why the fuck are there so many queer girlies in pop music? We're going to get into all of that. But first, we're going to start the episode as we always do, talking about what we're so wet and so dry about in this very moment. So I will go first. It was like a half wet, like half dry, but I'm just making it wet. So the other day, like I was working from my bed because um, I was just like a lazy day. And, you know, like my friend Sean staying with me, he's in the living room and Mozzie, my dog, was in the living room, too. <laughs> and I heard this like crash, but I was like doing other shit. So I was like, I'm not going to like worry about it right now. Like, it's fine. Right. Like, it's probably Mozzie in the trash. And then like okay. later I come out to go to the bathroom and Sean was like, the fucking money tree exploded. So I have a money tree that was in a ceramic square, like teal colored vase. It was like short though. And it's a money tree. I put like fortune cookie things on it and like pennies and I water it and I pray for money, but mm -hmm. the pot exploded. So like right now it's in a little water bottle, but I'm just choosing to believe that that means a lot of like so much money's coming. Did you look it, it up or no? couldn't handle it, no. Yeah, I would choose to believe that as well. And in that mind, that makes a lot of sense. Right. In my mind, that makes a lot it of sense. It makes so much sense. Like, it was so full yeah. with the energy that it just... It and popped. when I was... When it exploded, because I remember hearing it, clocking it, I was looking at the So Wet, So Dry metrics. No, the fuck you I was. I was. And I saw someone had put us on some, like, that playlist shout out to whoever put us on a playlist i think it was like natalie something we for love the you. hot girls hot bitch. girl video essays thank you it literally means so much and someone else posted us on reddit so i don't know i just i think it's a sign it's coming listener support like autumn said um, <laughs> right um okay guys well for my wet if you guys have listened to really any episode of this podcast you know that we, I very much <laughs> admire Drew Afualo, and she does. I, I did meet her yesterday at the one and only Barnes and Noble at the Grove in fucking Hollywood, bitch, because she was having a book signing. Mm -hmm. um, it's right here, so I'll show it to you guys. It's her book called Loud, and she signed it. She said, "I love you." Oh my so god, she loves so me, cute. not you, basically. Um, but yeah, accept nothing less than the life you deserve. And it was just like so cool to meet her and just like be around other people that really love her as well and just like feel that pull towards her or whatever. And so it was amazing. I was super nervous. I acted definitely, Fiji described it as the anxiety <laughs> from inside out too. But I, you know, I, what I said was normal. Yeah. How I looked was a little crazy. We but I was saying, video. bitch, the no. fuck, we are not putting the video. 
But it was still, like, it meant so much to me. And, like, we did hug and whatever. And, like, I ate it up, like, the whole thing. And I'm so excited to read the book. We definitely will talk about the book in future episodes because Fiji wants to read it as well. She's got her Mm -hmm. shit on pre-order. Yes. But, yeah, guys, I met Drew. So, yes, I guess. (laughs) Yes. Um, Okay, so dry. (laughs) Well, first of all, my mom was here this week, which was, like, cute nice like whatever I don't see <laughs> just I don't joking. see her that much joking. no it was good it was it was a good time it was good to see her but like you know it's it's a lot like mm-hmm. sometimes like being with her like after I haven't seen her for like months in like a hotel room for like 36 hours it's just a lot so like immediately no, after you, mm-hmm. yeah so it's just a lot so immediately after I go out with like a couple of my friends Everyone was having a bad day. Like, all of my friends were having a bad day. I was having a bad day. Whatever. We ate prosciutto and mozzarella and tried to be cute and went to a bunch of different bars. I don't know what it is. I think I'm just old now. I don't fucking know. But I throw up every time I drink alcohol, especially if it's cocktail. Because one of our friends was the bartender, and he knew I was having a bad day. He knew Sean was having a bad day. He knew my other friend was having a bad day. So when I tell you, like, I... Every time I looked away, there was a new drink in front of me, like a new shot in front of me, like a new mixed cocktail. I wasn't even out late. I was out till like 1230. But yeah, at like six in the morning, I projectile vomited on the duck prosciutto on my bathroom floor. And then what? (laughs) Yes. And then in the toilet as well. And I'm just like every single time it hasn't even been a it's not even like a clubbing crazy night. It's literally just drinks and apps with my friends that turns into me throwing up. And then the next day I'm recovering. I worked. I'm recovering. I'm recovering. I (laughs) I ordered pokey because that's what you eat the next day after you throw up. I don't fucking know. Didn't make me feel better. I think it was food food poisoning. And I was like dying before recording this episode. So I don't know, guys. Like, I'm only 26, but I feel like I have the body of an old woman when it comes to drinking. And yeah. Right. And I, you know, guys, I pleaded with Fiji. You know, we don't need to record. But this this bitch right here, she gets it done. Okay? She's better than me. She wants, Do like, you know she... how terrible I would feel, though? Guys, imagine projectile vomiting vomiting on your floor vomiting. one day, sitting watching Netflix the next, and then the next day having explosive diarrhea in the bathroom. Like, I needed to make myself feel better, you know? Yeah, babe. I, I do understand. And we're doing it. Is it working? We're doing Not it. Yet, probably. It, we're trying our best. Um. So my so dry is... It's just... It's very unfortunate, but... <laughs> If you guys do, like, watch the podcast, like, I'm not in my, you know, studio in my room right now, so I feel very weird. I hate the background. Like, it's low-key, just, like, whatever. We're going to move on from it. Next week, be back to normal. But, so, yeah, I'm house-sitting, dog-sitting, whatever. I've been here for, like, a little under a week, and the other day I was having breakfast. Mind you, huge house. Could have sat anywhere, bitch. Sat anywhere. How many chairs and surfaces there are chose to sit in this one particular chair that, you know, is kind of close to the window. Not that close, but it's close to the window. Eating my breakfast, chilling, watching Sims YouTubers. I get out to, like, clear my plate. I back up. I didn't back up that much, but the window cracked. What? How? I don't know. It's okay, so... The house is, like, really old. It's, like, old plumbing, old everything. I backed up in the wooden chair. Like, I hit the window. And it cracked. You heard it crack. I I can see it. Are you sure it wasn't just cracked before? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it must have been because what the fuck. But also, when I first got here, the first thing I did was pull down all the blinds because I'm a psycho and I don't want people looking in here. And I would have noticed that, but so are you gonna? So say yeah, something? I'm gonna have to. I mean, duh! It's like I'm gonna just I'm gonna offer to like pay for it and ask them. And Windows, hopefully... I feel like, are expensive. I know. I Especially looked it up. An the, old house. The worst it can be is like two hundred and seventy for the in window California. and the work. Just the one window. Okay. All right. I honestly, I thought you were going. With this, that it was like a white chair and you got avocado toast on it or something, which I feel like could have been worse because replacing like a nice furniture chair is more expensive. So like I feel like the windows 
not as I'm bad. I haven't said anything yet, too, because I'm going to act like it happened, like. Or the last like, day. Worst case Blame scenario. it on the dog. The dog. Bro, jo- yeah. I, I would know. never do that to him. He's such a sweetheart. He doesn't deserve that. But anyway, I yes. mean, shit happens. Honestly, my parents had some girl watching their dog and everything in their closet fell down just randomly like it just fell and they're not going to blame her for it. So it's like, you know, shit happens. Yeah, it could have been the wind. I know. I'm like, it was a bird. Whatever. A bird. Moving yeah. on. <laughs> um, but yeah, as Fiji said, today we are, in fact, talking about the hot queer girlies a lot of you know celebrities has come out and said that they're gay or bi or queer or whatever so we're gonna just talk about it talk about the representation talk about why do the gays love pop music so much and I feel like it's pretty evident that like the lesbians the queers are like having a really big moment right now so basically we're just gonna deep dive that so we're gonna start with this article which is from them and honestly this article was like chef's kiss I fucking loved it so we're gonna talk about it like the whole episode um but I just want to set the scene because it wasn't always like this obviously with celebrities coming out so Basically, their articles called How the Subtle Celebrity Coming Out Became the New Norm. Few headlines have been as evocative and straight to the point as the bold red text on the cover of Time magazine on April 14, 1997. Featuring Ellen DeGeneres crouched in an all-black outfit with white loafers flashing her trademark smile, the words were as simple as they were revolutionary, yep. I'm gay. With it, the star finally answered a question that had been on the public's mind for years. It came at a time when homosexuality was much more divisive than it is today, and the decision to come out carried consequences. Her ABC sitcom, Ellen, received a bomb threat, sponsors pulled ads, and the news inspired fevered debate about depicting queer people on screen. But at the time, it represented something monumental, a household name one Americans invited into their living rooms every week and laughed alongside was now openly gay. The way celebrities come out today could hardly look or feel more different. Gone are the days of the formal sit-down interviews like Ellen's. And it's just crazy. Like, I have two moms or whatever, so, like, i definitely been known about Ellen since I was born, just yeah. not even because she's, like, great. It's just, like, you. everyone knows about that time. Like, it yeah. was so crazy to have someone in mainstream media just come out like that. Um, and so it's just interesting to think about, and it's also, like, 1997. I mean, it's not that long ago. That's, like, right when we were born. So to think about that's what a celebrity looked like coming out 20 years ago to just now where people just, like, tweet it or whatever like it is cool and like important to reflect on because you kind of just forget you're like oh well it's different now you know yeah because Ellen really used to be like not the only one but the one in the spotlight that we all knew about I feel like like even like I don't know like I always had like gay men in my life growing up but not as many lesbian women and like all the women in my life would watch Ellen though and loved Ellen like Mm -hmm. they would be like a little weird about oh yeah and Ellen's like lesbian but it was like the first like media personality because it was like daytime television right that like every suburban mom yeah, yeah every like older lady suburban mom like I remember being at my Nana's house eating breakfast and watching that and like you know, not that they're homophobic, but they didn't like they it's not like they were hanging around queer people or like, yes, like at the marches and shit like that. Like it was still like a foreign concept to them. So I think like, you know, and Ellen got her hate like later on and is like potentially toxic in the workplace, whatever. But I do think she did like a lot. She went through a lot in the media, honestly. She did. She did. I know it. She is kind of depicted as like a devil in a lot of like YouTube things now and I definitely feel like a lot of it is probably true with how she treated the work like her employees but like you said I mean it's like that was crazy love her or hate her like that really did change things for people yes um because it's like those suburban moms they already liked her you know or loved her even if they're like really watching her show every single day or whenever it was on 
and they're like, fuck, like, am I, now it's either be openly homophobic or just and she deal was, like, with it. And she was, funny. Like, people liked the show. They liked her personality. And I feel like it really is, like, sometimes putting people on, to, <laughs> so sad, but, like, not being homophobic, not being racist or whatever takes that one friend or that one parasocial relationship for you to be like, oh, wow, right. they're a human just like us, you know. Dude, so. I know. So she was that yeah. for a lot of people. Um, but we wanted to ask you guys, like, do you think lesbians are thriving right now? Like, do you feel that way? Or is that just like a false narrative people are writing? Um, 76% of y'all said yes. And then 24% of y'all said no. We also asked you guys, do you feel like more women are queer now than ever? And an overwhelming 90% said yes and 10% said no. Um, and I think lesbians with privilege are thriving right now. Yeah. I think, you know, maybe not. Are there, I did vote that there are more queer women now than ever, but I think there's just more queer women that are out now more right. than ever it's not like they cease to exist before this yeah I think it's just like people are more comfortable it's more accepted slowly but surely in a lot of places at least yeah because that's how I was kind of like at first I think my impulse was to be like yes more women are queer now than ever but then I think I might have voted no because you I was did. like I, yeah. I was like damn that's tea because I think it is like you know it wasn't as safe for women to come out back then and like you know, yeah. it, it was harder, especially in, like, the media and there. Because wasn't Nina Simone queer? And um, what's her name? Wh Whitney Houston? Was it Whitney Houston that was oh queer? There's God. a whole Whitney bunch of Houston them. Whitney Houston was. Yeah, she that were. She had a were, secret lover named exactly. Robin. Yes, I remember watching the movie. She had a whole thing. And then Bitch. it was, like, there was, like, Madonna, like, kissed women and shit. But it was, like. A sexual thing and it wasn't like out so I feel like women were always like bi and queer and like whatever behind closed doors but they were encouraged either not to come out or it was less safe for them or whatever so right with yeah. celebrities specifically like I'm sure like Ellen's team didn't want her to do that because they yeah. didn't want to risk money and losing people to the show and then we asked you guys why do you think this is like why are there a lot more apparent you know queer women around um, and 68% said people feel more confident, safe to come out. 8% said it's trendy. 8% also said the compet content. And 16% said we are in a men are trash era. Um, and I honestly think it's a combination of all of those things, to be real with you. Like, I do think people feel more confident and safe to come out depending on where they're, they live and depending on where they're at in their life. I do think it is a little bit of a trendy type of thing. Like, not like people are lying. Yeah. But just like, I don't know, it feels that way to me right now. The compact content, I feel like I saw Kaylani was like the lesbian master doc, like really, you know, like that sort of thing. Yeah. And then we're we're definitely in a men or trash era. So I just feel like all of them. Yeah, I honestly think it, I think I put feel, people feel more confident and safe to come out. But like, I think a lot of the men are trash stuff, like women who are especially bisexual and are having problems with men are like, oh, well, I have the option of being with women, too. So why don't I just go down that road if it's not working? And I think Bruh. it's also like it's also a cop out that a lot of men say too. like men will just be like, oh, like women these days just want to date each other because they hate men so much like da 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 when it's like, OK, like women were kind of like always queer, you know, so it's like a little bit iffy. That's tea. Do they really? Do they really? Yes. Like I feel like men now more than ever are a little bit insecure about women's bisexuality yeah. and queerness, whereas before they would be like and they still definitely are like, oh, we can be in a quote unquote open relationship and you can only like date girls like I know you've had that happen to you like I've had guys say similar shit but I do think like in more recent times like men are like oh shit like this gay shit is serious like right you know? because I feel like they're always like erasing it or just like sexualizing it like yeah. oh it's really for me though like blah 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 but for them to like be more insecure about it it's almost a good thing because yeah. at least they're taking it seriously now because I honestly would rather someone be insecure and then I'm like okay well if you're like whatever talk about yeah. my sexuality then someone that's just like yeah go do whatever you want like 
I really don't care. It's not going to offend me when I'm just like, it's the same thing. Yeah, though. exactly. Um, oh, God, men are so annoying. Mm-hmm. Like they really that then they wonder why we're in men are trash. Like, right. All right, guys, 2024 is the year of the lesbian and I'm going to tell you why. So I woke up the other night and I had this in my notes app and I have a habit of just like writing random shit down when I have insomnia, like no explanation. But I saw this and I'm like, this has legs. Lesbians have been dominating mainstream pop culture this year and I just feel fed, just a constant buffet of new tidbits. Here's our recap so far. First, obviously we have lunch. I have been manifesting Billie Eilish to come out for years now. Not only did she do that this year, not only did she have that Rolling Stone interview, we got this song. I forget who I am when this song is playing. I almost rear-ended a car yesterday hearing a new lyric. We got the OG L Word cast coming out at Coachella, which actually caused one of my straight friends to actually watch the show, which ultimately leads me to Renee Rapp and Chapel Roan. Love Lies Bleeding, Kristen Stewart was also one I wanted to come out for years, and now she's having that, you know, the bathroom scene. This is the first time I've seen these adorable prom videos. I forget the name of the show, but holy shit. I don't love the last one, but she has representation. Yeah, I know we're gonna talk about more of like the celebrities in a minute, but like the TikTok stuff, like how she said the um, prom couples and everything, I feel like I've definitely been seeing more of those like couples challenges. There's like um, the mask shortage stuff where they're at the like lesbian bars looking for masks. There's also (laughs) the one where like the mask girl will be like, it'll be her head and then the femme girl with her nails. Have you seen that one? Yeah. Yeah, like those are super cute. Like there's just more content and like trends overall. But definitely Jojo Siwa is a fucking moment too. (laughs) Like I want to talk, like I want to talk about her for a little bit because I feel like She's trending so hard because the shit that she does is so fucking outrageous. But it's also like, like she's trying to be in her Miley Cyrus era. But it's also like she has been in the public eye and is coming, like came out while she was in the public eye. Like, I don't think there's anyone like she's different. You know, like she's she's growing up. She's going through her shit. I think she likes pissing people off to get like the rage bait. Like, I want to hate her. Because she's so cringy, but at the same time, I'm just like, I don't know, guys. She's just growing up, like. Yeah, the thing is, is like, and I know she's not a child anymore, but like, she is just like young, and it does feel weird for like adults to like tear her apart or whatever. Yeah. But I've like, I'm an avid, like, I'm a dance mom. Yeah. Like, and so I, that's how I remember JoJo Siwa, just like this innocent girl that would be screamed at by a fucking dance teacher who was so mean like that's what I think of first and I'm just like you know I I don't I'm not a fan of rage bait but I'm also just like it's her life like it's obviously working like I I remember like it was like she performed somewhere and the like arena told her like we've never had it this full before like she definitely speaks to a generation that is like welcoming her with open arms but I feel like a lot of people that hate on her like older Yeah, like the moms of their daughters, which I do think like I'm like none of us are hating on her because we're like, oh, like all the girls are coming out. They're gay. We love like the queer community. But like her fan base, I feel like is a lot more like girly girls, Southern maybe like the mothers are a little bit more like don't fucking do that, which is why I think she wants to have her acting out moment where she's like chugging the fucking fireball on stage and like being crazy. Yeah. You know, like it's kind of like Miley Cyrus because Miley Cyrus was queer too. And she was like coming out being more sexual, like all this type of stuff. And we were like, oh my God. But she had to like alienate herself from her yeah. know, all the audience somehow, you know? Like growing up in that space is so fucking hard. Right. Like I would be a train wreck, bro. Like absolutely. Like I honestly, and people that are hating like they have no idea what that's really like Mm -hmm. you know and she definitely has said problematic things oh yeah I know she's you know made people are mad because she's friends with uh Colleen Ballinger which I definitely oh yeah I don't fuck with her obviously but again like Jojo is just younger I don't know her life like I don't know I don't know guys yeah um But yeah, I just feel like it's in the air. Like, we're all feeling it. Like, the queers are definitely having a moment. And I'm so here for it. And just like what she said, like, being fed, like, coming out when I was, 
like 16, 15, even younger, there was not nothing to feed me, bro. Like, right. It was all these like the old L word, which was iconic, but like it wasn't now. The I didn't really thing see myself. I remember because I didn't know about the L word. Honestly, I think until I met you is when you like you put me onto the L word. The only like queer women representation that I can remember is Pretty Little Liars. Girl, that and that was my that was it. Like, yeah, that Maya was it. from Pretty Little Liars. Like it wasn't even Shay Mitchell for me. Yes, she's so hot. Yeah, but it was Maya the character. I don't know. I don't her remember name. her. But I used to dream, be like, I'm gonna find a Maya someday. Like I'm gonna leave this town. Like I was like so ready. Like, but yeah. And then I had Shannon Beveridge and Cami Scott. Like yeah. I would watch them in high school and like. They were like, I was like, oh, like they're more kind of near my age. Still like a lot, not a lot older, but you know, like yeah. five, six years. So I was like, but that was it. And now it's like everywhere you fucking turn. But um, also one of our listeners did submit a story that said, I just love a bad bitch and these bitches are just too bad. And that's why it's like, y'all can't even hate because these bitches are so bad. Yeah. Like, what are you even going to say? Like speaking to the homophobics and shit like that. Um, so basically this whole idea of like celebrities coming out casually, like we have Ellen, it's like a whole fucking to do. And now it's like bitches just tweet, make a TikTok and it's like revolutionary still and people get hyped, but it's very more, it's a lot more casual. So it's funny because we were just talking about her, but Shay Mitchell has this, you know, quick TikTok. You identify as bisexual. Do you own a green velvet cat? Yeah, this is so funny. The green couch is hilarious. I remember when that was trending because, guys, I have a green couch. And then it was also, like, the Himalayan salt rocks was one. And then there was, like, there were, like, these three things in a meme. And I literally have them all in my place. But, like, for someone like Shay, I would have almost already thought she was bi just because the character she played. But, like, I, know. I know that's fucked up, you know? I know. I remember I watched – I was deep diving her during that era. And I found this interview – and they were like, do you, how do you feel, like, playing a lesbian? And she's like, yeah, like, they all just smell good. Like, women are so hot, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, my God, she's gay. But I still was like, no, she's straight. But I don't know. That's It's just a, a TikTok trend, and then you just come out like that. Like, it's just it's yeah. crazy, and it hits. And similar to that, you have, like, Billie Eilish. And I found this in the Them article. But essentially, she candidly told Variety she was physically attracted to women during a larger conversation about women artists last month, an unceremonious omission that became a global news story. She later told the outlet she thought her sexuality had been obvious all this time and that she didn't mean to come out in the story. I just don't really believe in it, she explained. And I remember when this went down and she... I, like, believe that she kind of felt outed by this certain yeah. reporter because that's not really what she meant or she wasn't trying to do that. She was yeah. kind of just, like, but that whole thing, I just don't really believe in it. People got a little upset by that. I remember that. Yeah. Um. But the fact that she said it just had been obvious, I'm like, yeah, exactly. Well, it like, was, but I think that's also the thing because I remember there was some actor, it was a guy, though, and people were like, oh, he has to be queer. Oh, he has to be queer. Oh, he has to be queer. And then he got pissed and tweeted, like, okay, like, I am, but fuck you guys for, like, you know, harassing me about it because I wanted to come out in, like, my own time. So I feel like Billy's one of those people that we always kind of thought was queer, but it's also weird to be, like, just put that on her without her saying it herself, you know? I know, because honestly, it's like people are like, the way she dresses, but it's like, honestly, you guys, there's so many straight people that yeah. dress like that. Like, I learned that lesson a long time ago. Like, yeah. you, can't, like honestly, as much as we joke, like, oh, she looks gay, it's not a thing. Yeah. Like, it's really not a thing. And people, and like, one of my best friends growing up was the perfect example. Like, she honestly would dress so gay, in my opinion. And I'm like, you're just pissing people off. Like, stop. Yeah. But so, but I'm so happy that Billy's out. Like, honestly, I think she's so fucking hot. And just like that TikTok we played, the song Lunch is everything. And people are and have been freaking out about it. I mean, it's been out for two months now. But it's. Yeah. It's just insane to have another woman, like, singing about openly girls. Like, it's always yeah. just so heteronormative constantly, you know? Mm -hmm. So, it's hot. 
Um, and then someone else who came out recently is Miss Becca Moore. Um, so we'll show that. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Becca Moore. You're listening to For the Girls with Becca Moore. Um, and I'm dating a girl. <laughs> so I'm literally for the girls. It's scary to talk about this because I don't want... I don't know. I honestly didn't think that this would like bring up so much emotion, but I think I just, I don't want anyone to like think I've changed or that I'm a different person. Like, especially I think friends that I've had in the past, I like am definitely worried about, um, I don't know. I think I need to take a break. So if you guys are listening audio wise, the first TikTok was just like a slideshow of like her and Shannon Beveridge, like, you know, throughout their relationship because it was a secret. So crazy to me. I, this whole thing, I you remember guys. seeing I was out with my friend Sean and I saw her post with Shannon and the caption was like, turns out I'm really for the girls because her podcast is called For the Girls. And I was like, wait. And then I was like, oh, my God, I can't wait to tell Autumn. But I was going to wait until the podcast because I yeah, wanted a reaction in real time. But I was so hyped because I've had a low-key crush on her for, like, a minute since her TikTok content. And I'm like, when I saw that she was gay, I was like, I knew it. Like, I just knew it. You know, but I'm, if any bitch that we talk about in this episode, she's the one I'm the most down for, so. Are you fucking serious? She's the one, like, no shade to her at all, but she's the one for you. I just think she's so funny. Like, Uh I think her TikToks are so funny. Like, she uses, like, satire and, like, sarcasm. Yeah, she honestly. She's got, like, she's hot and she's got, like, a really good personality. <laughs> She's just not my type, but I'm all for you. I want to like, know how tall she is, someone. low key. I feel like that I feel matters, like she's but... like she, she. You would be pleased with her. Yeah, I Becca. Like if you and Shannon don't work out, yeah, yeah. and Shannon, if you and <laughs> right, Becca don't just, work out, hey, <laughs> like we'll have we're both on. down. So no, just kidding. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's I think it's cool, and I honestly think that them lesbians like because she in my opinion I feel like she is the same way and how I just look straight like I feel like I would have I would have never saw that coming I don't have a crush on her I feel like when you have a crush on a girl like you think that you know like like, you were right a little bit but you were right but it was something about her personality because she would talk about guys and stuff too but I don't know and you were like like, nah maybe (laughs) it was fucked up and maybe this is like low key misogynistic, but I feel like anytime a girl has like a per- a real personality, they're queer. Um, like no, I don't know. I feel like when they have queer. a good, like a really good personality, it's like they have to be right. I think it has something but then you to do have with Drew's. like the male gaze too, because like some of the shit she yeah. would say, I'm just like, okay, like you don't really give like a fu- like you're not too concerned with just men liking you. Like, there's something mm-hmm. else here. Like, you're really for the girls. Like, I, I, just, I don't know. like, at this point, I've seen Shannon. It's not, like, so many different relationships. It's no different than really a lot of other people. But because but she's, she's in, in the public, public eye, yeah. I've just seen her, like, make content with so many people. And it's just, like, I don't know. And then it's, like, you think about where she started with Cammy is, like, blonde with blue eyes. And, again, like, this is all so fucked up to even think about. Like, why am I? Well, but I, it's, like, as a fan, quote, unquote, like, you can't help. Like, your mind, I, I would never say trust. this to her. Yeah. Like, I would never say any of this to her. That's so disrespectful. But, like, in your mind, you can't help but just, like, compare it because, like, she has had so many public relationships and they've all been such hot, successful, powerful women. And did you know Becca was in Fletcher's music video? Shut the fuck because, up. B- because she was, Becca was talking about how like the, her podcast episode with her like coming out was really, really good. Um, but she was talking about how like You're she met sh- I love her. She met Shannon at this video shoot and like she like was so into oh, yeah, it she was that. speaking. But yeah. she was like, Oh, like I guess Shannon was like, Has anyone been in a music video? And Becca was like, Yeah, I was and said like 
Fletcher is like not knowing that that was her ex. Oh. And, and so Shannon was like, okay. Like, okay. She just, but I love how. That's um, hilarious. She just owns like her embarrassing shit. But I will say Becca kind of like soft launched Shannon sort of like she was calling her Sam and I using know. he him pronouns. Bruh. And I thought that was like a Sam? little bit weird i don't know oh, you're critiquing it hey. yeah because i'm a little bit like i mean i don't know what i would do if i was in her position because like i do feel like you know they wanted to like see how their relationship was first before they bring it into the public like anything like that like she said her friends knew but like i don't know like, they've been dating for a while like the stuff they were talking about like they've been dating for months and months and months. but wouldn't you be like like say you start dating a girl it's her first like you're her first queer relationship and she's a content creator, and she talks about you in her content, but uses he, him pronouns. I think that's fucking crazy, yeah, bro. But I like, think that's what happens when you date content creators. Like, or maybe, like, they have, like, a kink for, like, secrets. Like, I because she, I don't know, another, but that's not what bothered me. Like, the fact that that's, It was just that Shannon's had, like, other people that you No, I'm ship. just, like, I, yeah, I just wanted Shannon to be, like, I don't know, Single, like, let's yeah, like, up. Let's, no, just how kidding. I thought about it was completely wrong and fucked up, like, and so I'm, like, I'm not even gonna speak, but, like, because, but there's, I didn't know who Becca was. Like, I had no idea who she was. I felt similarly to Becky. I was like, who the fuck is this? Like, I'm just like, these bitches keep popping out of nowhere. Like, where are y'all meeting Shannon at? Like, I just I feel don't. like it's like LA is like a small. But then also I found out from her podcast that the, the you know, the tall guy with the brownish hair. He does TikToks too. They're like friends. I forget his fucking name. Chris Olsen? No. No, I forget his name, but. Like, I always thought he was gay. Everybody always thought he was gay, but he was on her podcast and he was like, oh, they were talking about, remember when he was in love with her? And I'm like, oh, he's bi. And now I'm in love with him too. So like Loki, like both of them, I'm like. Oh my God, you're crazy, bro. But yeah, that's, that's Becca Moore, guys. Honestly, we support, like. We whatever. love. So this next person we're going to talk about is also named Becca. Um, Becca Tiley. And she's from The Bachelor, and essentially her longtime girlfriend is none other than Haley Kiyoko, you guys, who is a phenomenal singer-actress, all of the above. But she came out indirectly in May 2022 through an appearance in the Pop Singers for the Girls music video. As she wrote on Instagram, hard to say if this is a hard or soft launch, but it is a launch. I think I just finally felt ready, she said. The thought of sharing our relationship always made me feel scared and anxious, worried about how people would react, what they would say. I just remember when we were talking about me being in For the Girls music video, I didn't have any fear or anxiety about it. So I had no idea anything about Haley Kiyoko's like girlfriend. So I was like, oh my God, and she's the runner up of The Bachelor. Yeah. Like, just so much information. I was like, damn, this is crazy. But it's like just another, this whole like hard soft launch the instagram posting like i know it's like these are like celebrities quote unquote but yeah. if we just like take a step back like it's all just so crazy to me that these people really feel like like it's just going even back to shannon and becca it's like they feel like they have to say something yeah or because part of me is just like well who gives a fuck like just start posting you don't need to yeah. say hard launch or whatever but if that makes people feel good, I don't know. But I do think it's funny how she said, like, hard, like, I don't know if this is hard or soft, but it is indeed a launch. Like, I thought that was different. You know? I, I think it makes sense, too, because, like, if I had a partner that I was, like, not public with and then they were about to have, like, a sexy music video with someone else and I had the option to be in it. I'd be like, yeah, no, that should be me, not the other person, you know? Like, the fuck? So, Absolutely, yeah. bitch. Absolutely. Um, and then Renee Rapp is someone that I guess was identifying as bisexual and kind of uh, came forward and was like, I'm a lesbian, similar to Kehlani. 
Um, but I didn't know too much about Renee Rapp. Like, honestly, I knew that the queer girlies were like, like all these people, like queer women are like feral for. Like we yeah. haven't even gotten into Chapel Road yet. Like it's like it just gets more and more intense, you know? she was in that show. Yeah, oh Sex my Lives God. of College Girls. Because I remember Such being like excited show. when I watched it because like her storyline was really she interesting. she was queer in it, Yeah, right? and she was like yeah. very femme, very popular, like whatever. And it was a different type of like coming out. Story. I loved it. Yeah, that show it was, was really so good. solid. But yeah, so we found this from Teen Vogue. Um, and basically she said, it's the coolest thing ever because I've only recently started referring to myself as a lesbian. And I've only recently been in a relationship where I'm like, yeah, I'm a lesbian for sure. Renee Rapp told The Hollywood Reporter in an interview. The Sex Lives of College Girls actor and singer describes watching footage on TikTok scenes from the show's first season in which her fan favorite character, Leighton Murray, comes out as a lesbian. The scene she found shared parallels with her lived reality. It's so interesting that at the time I wasn't even aware that what I was experiencing in my own personal life was actually exactly what I was doing on screen. I was in a relationship with a man, incredibly confused, unsure of myself, feeling so insecure in my acting. And I watched the scene the other day and I was like, wow, I feel so lucky to have that, she said. Um, And so basically we had that. And then she affirmed again that she's lesbian um, after a SNL hosting performance earlier this year. And she was described by fans and press as hard launching her lesbian identity an evolution from how she previously identified publicly as bisexual. It's not the first time that Rapp described exploring expressions of sexual identity through character interpretations as an actor. Speaking about her turn as Regina George in the Mean Girls musical adaptation, Rapp told them that Regina being a lesbian was always my interpretation of it, still is my interpretation of it. It might not be other people's, but I, and I truly don't care. It's mine and that's how I feel. Two weeks ago, the singer posted a video to YouTube lip singing over her hit song, Tummy Hurts, in which lyrics describe aching over a lost lover with the caption, writing this, then coming out as a lesbian, I contain multitudes. So obviously a lot to unpack. I love that she thought Regina was a lesbian and like everyone else, like, felt that too just because of her and like people again went feral for her and I think it's so crazy for her to see those parallels in her sexuality on screen and off screen like that must have been so surreal and it just makes you know watching the show as a viewer like honestly just more powerful because she's like she couldn't even differentiate the two characters from like herself and her character yeah that's like really like the universe coming together to be like you're exactly where you're supposed to be and like it's like talk all about angel numbers, like bitch. that's so crazy but I have thought before I didn't know I haven't seen the Mean Girls musical adaptation but I had thought it before don't. that <laughs> I had thought before that Mean Girls was kind of gay because I'm like What's, Bro. what's her name? What's I the, used to feel gay feelings watching Mean Girls right, as a Right, because child. How Regina like, would always call, um, what's her fa- name? Janice Ian. Jan- Janice, um, lesbian. And then I heard other Im- interpretations that Janice was really Lebanese, and that's why Regina said that. But I was, like, also, like, you know how, she like... Put it, she was dumb. Yeah, yeah, but, like, girls do, like, gay shit, like, when they're younger, growing up. I and think how it's they up to besties. the audience. Like, it could be Bro. some, like, internalized homophobia. Like, she wanted to outcast her so she didn't have to deal with her own queer identity. Like, I don't know. Like The backstory writes itself. Right. It writes the mother. It's so, And I love that, dude. Yeah. And if you really think about it, exactly. That's so mean, girl, to be, like oh my God, like she kissed me and I liked it and now I'm going to ruin like, her bully life. Her, and yeah. Make sure everyone, no one thinks it's me. Um, but yeah, Renee Rapp is just so unbelievably fucking talented. Yeah. And it's just like, like, I don't know, we still have more to talk about. And it's just like, there's really so many women right yeah. now. It's, it's crazy. Um, and honestly, I'm jealous. Like, I wish I grew up at a time like this, but... It's also, like, it did feel, um, like, I don't know, not special, but it did feel like it was something to 
really be like talked about and was like super meaningful. Well, now it's kind of just like everyone's so like, oh yeah, you're like, you're gay. It's fine. Like everyone yeah. kind of brush over it, which is good. Like that's normalizing it, which is where you want to go. But it's just a different experience. It's like low key, like you're part of history, though. You know, like you know how people talk about, oh, I remember like when fucking nine eleven happened, <laughs> yeah, or when old? schools yeah. were segregated, or gay marriage wasn't legal, like all that stuff. Like it's like you know, we did kind of grow up in the time where it was like there was shit like Katy Perry's "I Kissed a Girl," which it was all which is so fucked. Like back. Madonna kissing Britney Spears. There was like shit like that, and Iconic. even Katy Perry and Rihanna had like a friendship that was like. Mm-hmm. queer and like whatever there was all of that stuff but it wasn't it was not the same at all you know so it's cool to see like in ways like you know you paved the way for it to be normal for like our kids and everything like that growing up like it's gonna be so much easier yeah oh my god so much easier um and then also Kalani, which I'm a huge fan of like I honestly have an article but I don't even need to read it guys I know exactly what the fuck happened hey guys Autumn here just wanted to pop in quick and say that this episode was recorded before Kalani's ex-boyfriend the father of her child came out with allegations against her so that's why we didn't talk about that at all um but all I have to say is yikes Back to the episode. So basically, Kehlani was on a live with one of her other friends. Like, her friend was on live and Kehlani was just there. And there was literally, like, 30 people watching the live. Like, there wasn't that many people. And then people in the comments were like, oh, my God, is that Kehlani? Like, what you been up to, girl? Like, trying to talk to her. And she's like, um, the actual quote was like, you want to know what's new about me? I finally know I'm a lesbian. I just wanted y'all to know that everyone knew but me. And she reflects back on that and is like, honestly, I had no idea the impact that would have. Like, I didn't think people were going to screen record that. And it's like, she just, it was so just casual. Like, oh yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then it like made headlines, made all over TikTok. And people were like, oh my God, Kehlani's a lesbian. And I'm, and then she tweeted a video and was like, yes, you guys, like, this is what happened. Like, I was just on this live, but like, yes, I am a lesbian. i like been known that for the past however many months but now I've just told you guys you know um but I definitely was like that's cool because I Kehlani's always been someone that sings about you know men and women and I always would go more towards the songs where she was like singing about women just because there's so like she none wasn't because I thought she identifies as bi yeah but now she identifies as lesbian not bi oh so this was more recently super recent. Okay, because I just sent you while we were like getting ready before we started recording. I sent you a TikTok about like she I know. got married on some low key shit but they're not like married anymore. Cuz I yeah. remember she was by and then I remember she like got pregnant with that guy and everyone was like, "Oh, she's not really bi," which again is bi ratio. People love to do that when like someone, you know, goes uh-huh. back to men or whatever. But I didn't know that she identifies as lesbian now, which is like, got like I don't know. Sometimes the identifying as shit can be like a little much with your, because it's like even you like to say like you're really pan, but you like to say bi. Like it's like, it's it's weird. Because what does bi on. even mean? Like yeah. I'm, I've always been, you know what I mean? It's like more than two genders, cool. But if it's just two genders, then that's not... And that's I the don't. thing. Because I like to say I'm bi too because I feel like that's the closest to how I identify. But at the same time, I don't believe that there's only two genders. Like, I don't really believe in, like, the binaries of just, like, you know, men and women. Like, I believe in non binary Like, all of that. And I would be open to other people too. So it's just weird. Like, I feel like we, like, put these labels as part of our identity. But, like, it's... It, you should be able to do that. I just hate when other people use it against you to be like, oh, see, you're not really bi. Oh, see, like, and then you feel like you have to identify as lesbian because you're in, like, a lesbian relationship now. But, like, what if she starts dating a man again? And then it's like, oh, you were never, like, that is I just know. Like, guys. I know. Just let her do what she, just let her, just let her do what she Yeah. Wants. Um, she was actually, re- I think it was recently, she was on that chicken shop date show, the same one Billie Eilish was on, the yeah. video I played. You should watch that. She looks hot as fuck. Love. It's really cute. Um, but let's move into 
some impacts on the culture. Like, what is this doing to the rest of society? So we asked you guys, who out of the following is your favorite queer celeb right now? And the winner was Kehlani at 36%, Chapel Roan at 28%, and then tied for 18% was Renee Rapp and Billie Eilish. And I honestly thought it was going to be Renee Rapp because she was winning by a ton on just my polls. I know. I know. Usually for me, I would say Kehlani, but Billie Eilish has me in a chokehold right now. Yeah. So that's who I said. Um, but there was no rhyme or reason. I honestly was just curious what you guys were into. Um, I wish we could have put more options, but those are just some bitches literally killing it right now. Yes. So. Um, and then we also asked you guys, many celebrities are coming out as LGBTQ. What do you think this does to the culture? And 67% of you guys said it makes people feel empowered. 29% said it makes being queer cool. And 4% said it increases backlash and judgment. Um, and I definitely said it makes people feel empowered. Like, I want to look on the bright <laughs> side of things. I mean, I definitely think it's, <laughs> being queer is cool now. Like, cooler. Like, the hot girlies that are queer always have, like, good, not always, but, like, usually have, like, good style. Like, they're in the media. Like, we're doing different stuff. So, I don't know. I, I think it does have a coolness about it, but I don't want to, like, get into the territory of I'm like, oh, it's just trending, you know? Yeah, 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 totally. I think it makes people feel empowered 1,000%. Like, that's what representation does for sure. Um, I mean, we're going to get into some increased backlash and judgment and things like that. It's more so just like, you know, with more representation, there are, you know, more people that will comment hateful things. But I think overall, it's so beneficial. We need it. Yeah. The queers have been dying, begging, screaming, crying for it. So overall, I think it does make people feel empowered. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a good thing. And speaking of someone that's made people feel fucking empowered is Miss Chapel Roan. Again, people are feral. Yeah. They love Chapel and as they should. She was just recently on Drew Afuala's podcast and she said, you know, I miss frolicking in the woods and being a freak. And she always just says that. She's like, I just want to be a freak. Like, she was like, I miss doing drugs in public. Like, she's just, like, so free and real. Yeah. And so amazing. But people are loving her. Um, this article said, you know, she's described as L.A.'s queer pop superstar in the making. Roan's music and her story heavily centers on sexual liberation and the unapologetic acceptance of her queerness. The strong audience reaction to this song truly showcases the importance of queer representation in the media. Recently, one of my straight friends asked me why I continue to rewatch queer movies, TV shows, and music videos since I've already seen them. I was surprised that I even needed to explain myself, but I was reminded at that moment, just how accessible media is for straight people. They can constantly find a new show, song, or movie they feel represented by. There is a shortage of there is a shortage of realistically told queer media that is not sexualizing or tokenizing the characters. So when I find media that I feel seen by, it's something I cherish and watch or listen to over and over and over again. Being queer has become more accepted in the mainstream, but that does not take away the need for more diverse queer representation. There is a severe lack of non-stereotypical queer representation that features masculine, feminine, and genderqueer individuals of all ethnicities, body types, and abilities. Often the queer quote-unquote representation will be two feminine, white-passing women. Yikes. Likely because their existence conforms best within our patriarchal heterosexual <laughs> our patriarchal heterosexual society. If more queer people can be given the opportunity to make more media, we will undoubtedly see more authentic, inclusive depictions of queer people in the mainstream. And that is why artists like Chapel Roan means so much to queer people. Media has the power to tell marginalized stories and help people feel seen or accepted. With all the pain and judgment that queer people often endure, seeing queer people live happily and unapologetically is incredibly important. 
for the well-being of the entire community. Yeah, we kind of talked about Chapel Roan in our compet episode, which I think is like a good one to talk about with this one. But like I had came across one of her songs a couple like I want to say almost a year ago, longer maybe because I think I was going through my breakup. And there was one of her songs that I didn't even know who she was, didn't peep what she looked like, nothing, but I liked the song. And yeah. it's only recently that she's become, like, so big on TikTok. And she had, like, a loyal, right. like, cult following. Like, people keep saying, like, no, like, people knew about her, but it wasn't this big. And even she said, like, she's a little bit, like, overwhelmed with, like, how quickly her success has, like, taken off. Because, like, she wasn't this big when I think she scheduled the tour, but now being she can't on the tour, just like, yeah, it's like insane. But I, I watched like an edit of a bunch of her like TikTok videos, like clipped together the other day. It came in my feed and she's hilarious. Like she just so seems like funny. a real ass person, like a regular Whoa. girl you want to root for. Like, it's just like, I, I love her and I really need to deep dive her more because like I get the, the hype, like the hype is so fucking real. Um, but yeah, I think queer representation is so important and it's so funny. Like when we think about it, especially like in the arts, like I feel like queer people really drive like so many of the artistic movements like in the past, but they had to do it like in the shadows, you know, or like be in like uh, bearded like relationships, like shit like that. But like when we think about Emerson, the college we went to, when I think about theater, when I think about like music, all of that stuff, I think of like queer people running that shit, you know, more than the heterosexual people, but it's such a gap in what we see on TV all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And it is like, you know, we've talked about a lot of people, but we've talked about primarily, you know, white women. And I think the part about how it's the easiest in this society for, you know, well, at least they're feminine presenting and gay, or at least, you know, they're white and gay or whatever. And I think that's really real. And it's definitely when we say lesbians are thriving, we don't mean that like everything's done, everything's fixed. Like we definitely need more, especially when it comes to people of color and, you know, body types for sure too. Like that's a really big one. And it's like, so all that to say, we know everything's not perfect, but it is definitely different than how it's ever been. And it's OK to be excited about that while yeah. knowing that there's still a lot more work to, to be go. done, um, just like with most things. And it's crazy with Chapel Roan too. Chapel Roan, I read that, you know, this sort of um, her album to go big and this song, it was kind of like her last try before she said she was going to go home because it was so hard, like making money in LA. And she's like, I didn't have any money. Like I really was like, I'm just going to try this. And then if it doesn't work, like I honestly have to go back home. Like I can't crazy do that. And like, I don't know, just to hear her talking about money too. She's like, I'm not afraid of like being like broke like I've been there before and just what you said like the realness is crazy in her and it's so evident and I feel like that's why people love her so much um and she definitely has a different look like she's not someone you see all the time like she is a white woman obviously but I do think there's something very special she does drag like she does right, that's drag. her original drag name is Chapel Roan. Yeah, yeah, and she, like, wears the... Ma- like, she always, like, does, like, odes to, like, other famous queer people that I haven't been tapped in enough, but that's, like, what I've seen that she does. Yeah. But I do think, like, because I'm thinking about it now, like, it is, like, in the spotlight right now, predominantly white women. And it's interesting because when you think about it, like, Ice Spice is bisexual, I think Dej Loaf just came out as gay or like or queer. I or love Dej. The one that, I know. The one that our song. That song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people were like, "Oh, like this makes so much sense." We always thought that she was, but isn't Cardi B bi too? I thought I have Cardi no B. No fucking idea. Yeah, and there's like a whole bunch of like other black women that I think like are queer, and like even in Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. I mean, it was like a uh, interracial relationship, but like one of those girls. So there is a lot of black women, but I feel like for some reason they don't get like the press and the media attention as much as white women do. They don't. You know, so I think that's like, you know, 
uh, we think of like Kehlani and stuff, which is like good to include. But like, yeah, I feel like there's definitely more, but we need to do, do better about like giving them like media attention and also just like, you know, raising their voices and not just white women. Yeah. And I feel like specifically kind of like when we're talking about like pop music and like artists and like that sort of thing, like it really is whitewashed in that sense a lot and yeah. it is kind of like again it's okay to be excited about it but it's also like you know okay like you know part well, of it is kind like, of like yeah because pop music I feel like is very whitewashed when you think about like Michael Jackson is like the like mainstream yeah. yeah 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 but it's like right now it's like Sabrina Carpenter you've got Taylor Swift like all those and it's yeah, also so it's very, very gay like, like I, it is but it's also like we're gonna talk about at the end like the queers yeah. and pop like it's a huge thing the queers with yeah. pop music and um so we're gonna get into it but it's just you know it's really important to just notice that like amongst being like so happy that there's more content to consume and all of that of queer people it's like just remembering that you know that intersectionality of said representation and then okay so I do want to touch on a little bit of backlash and just kind of the idea with increased visibility does come more backlash so from the same them article, but casual coming outs aren't necessarily easier or safer, especially for trans people. When YouTube star and Mr. Beast collaborator Chris Tyson came out as trans in a July interview with YouTuber Anthony Padilla, she received an onslaught of transphobic comments. Elliot Page detailed a 2022 transphobic attack that occurred when he came out in his memoir, Page Boy, while trans celebs like Dylan Mulvaney, love her, and Laverne Cox have dealt with similar online and in-person vit rile after speaking about their transitions. With increased visibility, we often see increased backlash, especially from the vocal minority of people in this country who oppose our very identities, adds Bright Williams. And while a recent GLAAD report found that 84% of non-LGBTQ plus Americans support equal rights for the queer community, it also revealed that less than 30% personally knew a trans individual. That may explain why we're seeing record numbers of anti-LGBTQ plus bills being introduced in states across the U.S., the bulk of which take aim our nation's 300,000 plus trans youth. It could also account for the more mixed experiences of trans celebrities. So definitely don't want to leave our trans, you know, sisters out of this at all. There are obviously a lot of trans lesbians and we're talking about the queer girlies, like whatever. Yeah. And so it just shows like, you know, as some things help in a movement, as some things continue to get forward, like it's just not there for trans people yet. And so I just wanted to acknowledge that. And it fucking sucks, you know. And yeah, Dylan is someone that I followed for like a pretty long time. And she's just so inspirational and sweet and genuine. And people really do attack her constantly. Um, and it's just like, she's not doing anything any different than anyone else, you know, like she's yeah. just out here living her best life. So I don't yeah, know. I honestly didn't know any of them except Laverne Cox. I know who she is because mm -hmm. she was also similar to Ellen. To me, she's one of the trans women that I think like really hit that suburban mom audience because yeah. she was on it's <laughs> it's house, Ellen. but it was like, what it was some law show, some show she was in, she, she She's an actress, and like my mom watched that show, and I remember like <gasps> Orange is the New Black. She was in that, but she was in something else where she was like a, a lawyer or a secretary. Oh yeah, you or, said like law show. Okay, yeah, something like that. Because I remember my mom being like, "Oh, I really like her," and like I listened to an interview about her, and like similarly, it's like you know those conversations weren't necessarily like coming up in my house before that. Like more with my dad because he's in the arts, and like he's worked with like you know, other trans writers and stuff like that, just at, like, panels and speaking engagements. But that's the first time, like, I had seen that representation and coming from, like, a, a family member that's older that, like, really fucked with them. So, like, she, I know, has done a lot, and she was, like, one of the first during that, like, early 2000s to 2010s time period. 
Um, but I'm wow. also thinking of the girl from Euphoria and then the other girl that's a model and she makes the funny TikTok videos. They look alike, low-key. Dude. Um, but yeah, I feel like there is more trans representation like now than there was, but it's so, like, I feel so awful sometimes because there is this weird fucked up like right wing movement that's very anti-trans right now and like we can't forget like like you said like our trans sisters when we're talking about like lifting queer women up and the boom and like um lesbian representation like we have to like include them too so, yeah. yeah and it's interesting too because again i think that um what was her character's name rue and jules yeah jules, jules hit people hard and again she's like white and like mostly like very feminine presenting Presenting, yeah so it's like easier pill to swallow yeah because that's like the right and same with laverne cox same with um the woman the model she's also very thin white woman like and i think well laverne cox isn't laverne cox is black (laughs) but like (laughs) but passing is a big conversation in it you know because the more that you're passing or like the more that you have access to, you know, like surgery or makeup or even clothes and all of those things. Like, I think it becomes like easier for people to like like, beauty accept you. It's definitely because I think of like most of the trans people that I know, like in my regular life aren't as like passing, you know, like and stuff like that. So it's like, it's definitely harder in ways. It's more difficult. I think for famous celebrities where they're getting like that influx of like hateful comments and like all of that shit. Right. But they're still protected enough in society where like they have these like walls that they can put up versus exactly. like people in our regular everyday life. And same for lesbians. Cause I saw a lot of people in the poll that we had put out that we talked about in the beginning where it's like our lesbians thriving right now. I saw people that I know lesbians voting. No. Cause it's like, you know, people are still going through it. So it's like, we can't think just because like, Oh, Chapel Rona is on the top charts and Laverne Cox is in this famous show that like that we're good. good now because yeah. it's very much like still not there right because it's like what we talked about with sex positive feminism too in that episode it's like Kim Kardashian can be out here like doing the most but she has full-time security yeah but like if we go take our tops off at a bar it's like we're not as not that she did that but it's like yeah. you're not as safe like you yeah. can't just do stuff like that um but yeah I don't know it's It's like, are lesbians thriving, like, maybe in pop culture and pop music, but, like, not, and especially with, like, the election glooming over us and, like, gay marriage and all that. It's just, like, they're not thriving, you know? But I, it's more so, like, they are in pop music, though. Like, at least we have that to distract us from all the bad shit. I don't know. Um, And then, also, this is kind of interesting. So, it's, like, thinking about, like, people coming out subtly like celebrities or even you know people like Becca Moore and like internet stars and it's like thinking about that kind of pressure to come out because it's like back in like the Ellen times it was like everyone would say don't and now that people are coming out more subtly like is the pressure decreasing like I don't really know if it is but it's just like a question that kind of popped into my head um, and they talked about it in the Them article, um, the Becca Tilly, the Bachelor, you know, runner up and Haley Kiyoko's yeah. girlfriend. She said, so basically she has a slightly different perspective on the topic. She said, I think I always saw coming out as something brave that people do. And then when it was me doing it, I remember thinking about how I hope one day there's not the need pressure for people to have to be brave to love who they want to love. Culturally, we could be inching closer to this sort of era Tilly describes, particular for cisgender LGB folks, so lesbian, gay, bisexual. I'm like, what the fuck? I've never seen it like LG. Yeah. Yeah. Who have gained social acceptance and mainstream visibility at a faster rate than the transgender community. These trends have led more Gen Zers to come out in general. Nearly 20% of Americans in this cohort identify as LGBTQ+. According to a recent Gallup poll, a record number of openly LGBTQ plus elected officials now hold office in American politics, too, and a film. As hearts and minds continue to change, queer public figures may not feel as obligated to disclose their sexuality in service of a political 
agenda. So I don't know. What do you think? Like, do you think people are like feeling less pressure? Do you think like, I mean, it's obviously so different from celebrities. Like they have so much more to consider because so many people are watching them. Um, but I don't know. It's just interesting. Like times are definitely shifting, you know? Yeah. I feel like it's like weird because in a certain sense, like I know, like for me coming out, wasn't really like a thing. Like it was just like a gradual journey. And then I remember like telling my parents in like a weird, angry way. (laughs) Um, but I don't know. I feel like it is like more of a thing for like regular people to have to quote unquote come out when they're in a relationship with someone and then they have to do it with right. their family or with like coworkers and stuff like that. But like, I like, I don't know. I don't feel like us regular people should need as much of an announcement. It's like almost like more of that when you're in a relationship, like you're hard launching someone just like you would do in a heterosexual relationship, like all of those things. But I don't know. I feel like Gen Z is very different. Like the younger side of Gen Z, I think it is a lot easier than it was like for us when we were in like high school, middle school, yeah. like that kind of stuff. I think everyone feels differently too. Like I think some people want an announcement and they like an announcement. Like I, I like an announcement. Like I do <laughs> like to like have it be known or whatever. And like I had my whole moment at like my 16th birthday, like telling my friends and like it was scary. But looking back, like I love any sort of attention. So I yeah. definitely ate it up. But it's also like it's so privileged because I had two moms like I was good. You know, I didn't have any worrisome other than like being bullied at school, which like I definitely got. But like I had thick skin like I was like you know, sexting Tumblr girls. Like, I didn't give a fuck. I was like, you guys have no idea. Like, life is so much better for me now. So, I don't know. I just feel like it just depends on what you really want. But I do think with people just coming out more subtly and it's not as big of a deal in the conversation, it's like there is less pressure, which I guess that's nice. You know, I don't want anyone to feel pressure. It's like if you don't want to make an announcement like definitely don't but like don't discourage if people like to and I even find myself like being hypocritical like with Becca and Shannon I'm like okay like we get it like you don't need a hard launch like 50,000 times like on individual all of your 16 platforms combined like we get it but I'm also just biased because I'm just like fuck like I've seen Shannon just love so many girls that aren't me I'm like that's crazy. Well and I think that's a good example because like when I was listening to Becca's podcast where she was like coming out and everything like she was like crying and she was getting emotional and she just kept saying like I don't want people to think of me like any differently and I I feel like I kind of like relate to that in the sense of like you know growing up going to Catholic school like having like certain combat tendencies like <laughs> so, like maybe like thinking things but being afraid of like what the response would be from like family members or like co-workers or like you know always being seen as straight and like queer wasn't any, even like an option that was like given to me it does feel like it's like a whoa like that's like a whole 180 so like I do feel like you know I have never been in like a lesbian queer relationship like with a woman like publicly long term it's all been like you know one night stands like shit like that so I do think I would have like anxiety about that more on the side of like family and like more just like the idea of like it should not be this whole identity consuming thing that like oh, like, baby, I never really knew her. Now I'm going to reassess every fucking interaction I've ever had with her. Like, all of yeah. that type of stuff. I know. But that was nerve it is. Yeah. I just, I just didn't want, like, my friends to think I wanted to fuck them. That was my yeah. biggest concern. And, of course, like, I remember this one friend I had. Like, she was like, so, like, would you hook up with me? And I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. No, that's I don't. a weird question. I know. Like, not a good friend. Like, we're not friends anymore. But it was just like, that's so, I just, I hated that. But I think, I think times are different depending on where you live, of course, and like what kind of people and family you have. Like, unfortunately, yeah. it's like we are kind of jaded by the fact that we live in Atlanta and LA. Like, I don't know what the fuck goes down and like fucking 
I don't even know. Like I would never live anywhere and it's a other learning curve. Like that, yeah, like, I have a cousin that like came like, out, like, had a girlfriend, like all of that, and like I've been in the room with other family members where they're talking about it in not the best way. Like not being hateful, but just being confused. Mm-hmm. And I think that is the annoying thing about like coming out or being queers in today's society still when there's older adults that didn't like grow up around that is that like unfortunately there's still some like education that you have to do which can feel so fucking draining and exhausting like I felt like that when I've been in interracial relationships before where it's like okay like not that they're gonna be like super racist and hate this person and I can't date them but like okay like you can't say that or like that's an old way of thinking about things or like whatever and it's the same with queer relationships especially with older people so like and that way I think like the coming out like people try to do that so it's like oh deal with your feelings right like like I don't want to be like involved in that and you still kind of have to be to a point I just want to close out with this from that same them article Although casually coming out is becoming more popular, that doesn't mean these disclosures carry less weight, even for public figures. We still live in a cis heteronormative world. As long as queer and trans people are targeted by legislative and literal violence, sharing our identities with the world will remain an act of bravery and self-assuredness. Celebrity or not, everyone deserves grace to open up in their own time on their own terms. That could mean doing so on social media in a televised interview or not at all. Perhaps the true new normal around coming out is a greater sense of autonomy to make that decision in a way that, as Tilly puts it, feels most free and liberated. Again, Tilly was Haley Kiyoko's long time girlfriend, guys. But so just all that to say, you know, it still is a big deal to come out. It still is very heavy and hard just because we have some like fun music to listen to. Um, but it's definitely doing wonders for, for the culture to have so many just women in power in general and then just add queer on top of that. Like we're we're busting. Like, I don't know, guys. <laughs> Screaming. Help me. Um, but yeah, let's wrap up the episode as we always do, talking about what we're so wet, so dry, and still a little bit confused about the topic. You want to go first? You want me to go first? I'll go first. I'll go first. Okay. I'll go first. I'm so wet just that we did a whole episode dedicated to the queer girlies. I'm so wet that we are having this sort of moment in time. Um, definitely, you know, the wettest thing about it is Billie Eilish for me. Like, I know I'm a little late to the game, but like, I just think she is everything that I could ever want in a wife or a girlfriend. And that song lunch, like, again, it has a firm fucking hostile grip on my neck, bitch. Like, I'm here for it. Um, and just, I don't know, like just to reminisce kind of about how it was for me to come out and what it was like in school back then. Like no one was singing brat summer, bitch. Like it was very just like there everything was, was, Gaga. that was, that was like the right, but people yeah. didn't think she was cool. They thought she was talented and like and all crazy. this, but she wasn't like an it girl, like yeah. having it girls that are queer and trans is fucking just it it didn't happen when we were younger and in high school at fucking all so it's nice to you know reminisce and I am excited for future generations and just hoping that you know it gets better um and also I know we didn't talk about Julia Fox so if you want to mention that and you're wet as well yeah I guess I am like wet about Julia Fox I I feel like that's more of like a confused so I'll talk about that in the confused section more but I, I, I think for wet like I'm definitely wet about all the representation. I feel like for me personally, like my my queer, my TikTok algorithm has like developed more queer and WLW relationships, which mm-hmm. I find like interesting because before that I was not watching like lesbian YouTubers. I was not really hip to a lot of queer culture, but I yeah. think in, in a <laughs> way, like for someone like me who, you know, like I'm open and I own my bisexuality, but I do feel like still insecure in a lot of ways about my sexuality and like nervous to explore relationships with women. Like it's, it's still like that, like coming out idea of like being in a relationship with a woman is something that does still like bother me a little bit and is something I would be like anxious about. Like if I was with 
a woman. So I mm-hmm. think for someone like me, it helps a lot to see like people like Chapel Roan, Billie Eilish, Kehlani, like all of these women, like being femme and owning their queerness and being themselves and like all of that because I think I've been around a lot more like gay men like you were really like the first like lesbian woman that I was like hanging out with (laughs) since then you know I have a lot more like lesbian friends like bisexual women friends but like seeing it in the media and like watching it in your own time I think is like just a different type of experience yeah you know so I definitely love that um and I'm wet, like, I don't know, like, I'm just wet for all these. I'm wet for Becca Moore, like, guys. Like, like what? I know, like. <sighs> like, I'm shocked. Like, I don't know. Like, babe, her style, like, you, I feel like you, like, like, not, it's like, there's personality, lip- though. Okay, okay. Like, I, I feel love- you usually like people that, like, are, like. A little edgier, like, a little bit more, like, yeah, definitely. But I think, like, it's just her personality for me. And also, like, she, like, kind of reminds me of this girl that, like, I went to, like, one of my friend's birthday <laughs> parties. Kidding. Remember when I went to Florida to go to her <laughs> birthday party and, like, her friend had a friend there and, like, there was a little, Yeah. Like, and she was very, like, blonde, like, basic, like, white girl vibes. But, like, we had a – I don't know. Like, I do mm-hmm. – I think I can, like – I'm all over the spectrum when it comes to, like, types of women that I like. But, like, Becca, she just does it for me. I don't know. I'm so surprised. So- why is by that, bro? Like she's really hot though, for yeah. sure, honestly. Um I yeah, that has me shook. Okay. <laughs> I'm so dry. I'm so dry. Obviously that there's still a lot of work to be done representation wise and I don't want people to feel, you know, confused or feel like everything's okay because of all these, you know, pop artists that are queer, like there still is so much work to be done, especially everything just feels so crazy. Talking about this during this political election and like everything is just so, so heavy right now. So I definitely don't want, I just feel like we deserve to be happy too and like celebrate the small wins. So like it's okay to be excited and stuff, but definitely dry about all the heavy stuff and very real stuff and legislation and just everything going on. Um, And especially, you know, for trans people, of course, and trans people of color to even go further than that. Like, it's just like, it's a very scary time. Um, But like I said, there's nothing wrong with enjoying some, you know, chaperone while you're like scared and just having (laughs) a vibe. Yeah, definitely, like, same. Like, I'm definitely dry about, like, as much as I'm wet about all of this, like, happening and the representation and all of that stuff, like, I'm still dry about, like, the lack of, like you said, like, body, different body diversity, like, race diversity, and even, like, who is getting the spotlight because I think that there is diversity in that, but it's not celebrated as much. Yeah. And same for um, trans women and trans queer people and, like, all of that, like, I do think we need to do a better job and like, like, like you said, the political climate right now for trans people is just like so fucked. We're confused. I mean, the only thing I really feel confused about, we didn't really talk about it too much, but it's just like the whole being gay or bi or lesbian is like trendy because like, I'm not going to lie, you guys. Okay. (laughs) I was one of like the first at my high school to like openly come out. That was like. You know, like, I wasn't the first lesbian to attend the high school, but, like, I made it very known between, with everyone, and then it's, like, just, like, four years later, it's, like, the whole fucking freshman class is, like, queer girls. Yeah. And it was just, like, crazy to me. Like, like, and I knew... Where's my spotlight? Like... Yeah, and, like, I know there's, like, so many people that were in my graduating class that identified as straight and now are gay. Like, so many... And so it's, like, I felt like I was the only one, but, like, really I was just, like, one of the only ones with two moms that was also gay because... You were the brave one, you know, like... Bro, so I'm just, like... Yeah. And now everyone's just all, like, "Eh." (laughs) So I don't know. I'm just, like, okay, guys, like, I'm, like, any of my high school bullies that are like it's brat summer like I'm I'm not no dude no dude so I I don't know (laughs) yeah I feel you like I feel like I'm on the other side of it where it's like I didn't own my queerness or even come into it or like be accepting of it until later so like I feel I can kind of like relate to someone like Becca Moore a little bit more or like even Julia Fox which I do want to like talk about for a minute because like 
Julia Fox, like, just came out on that TikTok where she stitched that, like, pretty popular lesbian TikToker. And she was just like, oh, sorry to all the men. Like, whatever. Um, and, and <laughs> Which, again, the casual, the casualness. The casualness. Like, super casual. I don't think she said anything since. And, like, the thing about that, like, struck... I just threw my straw. That struck something, like, interesting, like, a thought in me where I'm like, okay, like, Julia Fox is one of the, like, leaders, I think, in this movement that's, like, not just men are trash, but, like, I'm being celibate. Like, I don't want to, like, have sober. sex with... Boy sober. Like, I don't want to have sex with men. Like, da-da-da. And this, like, comes off of her dating Kanye, which is, like, you know, if, if we're going to talk about trash men, like, all right, like, Kanye is pretty fucking up there. But yeah. it makes me think, like... With a lot of the comp het stuff that's a conversation now and all these women talking about like going boy sober and going um, celibate, like how much of that is their own queer journey? You know what I'm saying? And like how much the men are like, oh, like women don't even like men anymore. Like they're all just gay, like whatever. Like I think it just goes to show how much of our culture like really does push heterosexuality especially if you're a femme presenting woman who has ever really gotten attention from men because I think like for so, like for me it was like never really like it was just I always had so much attention from men so yeah. it was never even really me thinking about what I'm attracted to it was just me like giving in to like the men that I was like around so like things like that with Julia Fox like I think we'll see like more of that in the future where like more women will come out as queer and it makes me think yeah. about the gender wars like a little bit differently. Like it's a it's a whole thing, you know, because I know I think the comp het, the lesbian doc, like all it's changing everything. And it, that's that's like so interesting to connect like boy sober to like coming out like, yeah, because it's just like, bro, I don't know. I know it's like the society like hasn't really allowed people to deep dive their own sexual fluidity that it's just like yeah. now all of a sudden where it's like a little bit more known it's a little bit more mainstream it's like we hate men and we're gay like it's kind yeah. of like what I've say been saying I always wanted and like yeah. knew I was like we can just take the men's sperm yeah. we can package <laughs> yep. it and save it and like everyone's just gay and it's like kind of slowly happening and I'm like wait a second I don't <laughs> like, I don't want this happening? actually I said to Fiji like this is so fucked up like honestly I might have us cut this out of the episode but I just feel like honestly like like a fun part about being queer is that not everyone is no you I know? have I have a friend that says that <laughs> I'll too. say it like team. he'll say like he likes to be the only gay one at the job that he's working it's at sexy. because he likes to be the star like you don't want to share the spotlight. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, like, it used to be much more like that. But now it's, like, everyone is fucking gay. And it's, it's also funny. Like, did you see when Trump got shot? Like, we were like, oh, fuck. Like, he won the election. Like, it's fucking over. And I saw so many <laughs> tweets that were like, all Biden has to do is come out as bisexual. And he won it back. And I'm like, no, like, low key. Because it, I feel like I, in <laughs> certain ways, like, I don't want to, I never want to like claim that it's just publicity and it's just whatever, but like, I'm sure that there are also people out there that are using it as a publicity thing because it's trending right now. So I don't want like, I just want to like throw that out there as a thing too, because I think because of this moment, like people can queer bait, people can do that and, and that it could know. benefit them. So it's this, it's weird. The I tables know. Are turning. I'm a little confused. I know. And I also do think I just last thing I'll say is it is like a little like it's it's privileged to be like, oh, well, like I liked it when I was the only gay one. Yeah. It's like, well, you obviously didn't like experience violence or anything. Cause if right. you did, you wouldn't be saying that. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to note that I do know that. But like I was just like being real for a second, guys. Like that's my experience. I statements, whatever. Yeah. So if you made it this far in the episode to the very end. Thank you so much for listening. Like you literally are the reason we do this. If you're still listening <laughs> right now. You. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube or follow us on Spotify, Amazon, Apple, any of those things. Um, give us a like and a comment on YouTube as well. We do always interact with the comments, um, especially when they're positive or just thoughtful and like you have something to add like we definitely want to know what you guys think about all of this and your experience whatever you want to share on spotify or apple or amazon or all of the other ones you can give us a star rating 
Um, and that would mean so much to us. Even if you're on YouTube, you can just click our Spotify in the description real quick. Click the follow button, four or five stars, whatever you think. Five. Boom, you're done. And we would appreciate it so much. And lastly, as always, our DMs and email is always open for topic suggestions, advice. We're so wet, so dry on all platforms. And our email is so wet, so dry at gmail.com. As always, the O's are zeros. Yes, and we also do have listener support, as Autumn mentioned in the beginning of this episode. That is the only way that you guys can financially support us for the work, the content that we are creating for you lovely folks. We're going to do it for free regardless, but it would really help so much if you donate, subscribe, 99 cents, (laughs) $4.99 or $9.99. It really feels like a donation at this point. Um, But yeah, it's at the bottom of the description of every single episode, no matter where you guys are listening, even if you're not listening on Spotify, it is on Spotify. And yeah, we love you guys so fucking much. We will catch you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. It's another video of the guy on the plane flirting. I just found out so much information about it and I want to really dig into it. I'm just playing. You guys are disgusting. Like actually repellent. You guys are loving this. Like you cannot get enough. And your addiction to surveillance and attention is betraying the fact that although you're the exact demographic to call yourself girls girls, your only allegiance is to your own entertainment. And you guys are having fun. You're posting theories, you're sleuthing around looking for her name, you're posting her name, you're posting her photo. You know she knows by now. She's gotten her fill of hearing from strangers on the internet.